Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to MK Canadian's Brokerage. My name is Mohammed. In this video, I'm going to explain to you guys how to complete a commercial insurance application, also known as an accord form. So, uh, let's get started with all due. Uh, the first thing you need to do is write the date. So, if today's date is 12 24 2017, this should be the date right over here. Going towards the left side agency, it's going to be your agency name. So, let's say if you're uh, 123 insurance and you're going to put that 123 insurance you're going to put down the address 212 William Street New York New York 11214 that's what you will put I'm just making up a random address then you put down your, your broker's name your, your phone number your broker's fax number your email address that's that's until then code subcode and agency customer ID number you really don't need it for code purposes then going towards over here carrier now, if you know that your insured's carrier, excellent. If you don't know it, don't worry about it. You really don't really need it for code purposes. The NAIC code, the program code, you really, again, don't need it. Company policy or program name, don't need it. Policy number, if you know it, fine. You don't know it, don't worry about it. Underwriter, underwriter's office, if you know the underwriter's name if you if you know you're going to be sending to one insurance company fine but if you're going to be sending to 10 different insurance companies as a broker for court purposes where it's not worth putting their names the underwriter's name then you just leave this blank you really don't need it for court purposes state of transaction is it a quote are you bounding it are you changing it are you canceling it whatever it is you put it down you put the date time and amp and whatever it is section attached what are you doing in this section are you doing a commercial general liability is it a business owners a business auto is it a uh, open cargo property whatever it is you will just check mark that's all you have to do don't worry about the premium because you will not know the premium because you're just doing the quote so you just leave that blank now attachments some customers might need attachments additional interest additional premises apartment building supplement contractor supplement driver information schedule whatever it is you will do that attachment just check mark it and that's all you have to do on your part going towards policy information right over here now what are you doing over here the proposed effective date meaning that what's the customer really need the policy to be effective date of it so let's say if they if they say you know what i need it by tomorrow then you just put 12 25 2017 if that's the date after that or let's say if today's date was uh, January 5th 2015 and the customer says I want the policy effective date January 6th 20 year then you put down all right over here expiration date is usually one year of, uh, of that day so again let's say if today's date was 12 24 2017 the expiration date will be 12 24 2018 usually a year it could be more than a year. It all depends on which insurance you have. But most of the time, it is a year. I haven't seen anyone that's more than a year. Building plan. Is it a direct bill or an agency bill? Now, <clears throat> a lot of people don't know, well, new specialty brokers don't know what the difference between a direct bill and an agency bill is. A direct bill is basically the customer is going to get billed. An agency bill is basically the broker is going to get billed. So what it means is simple. I'll give you an example. For direct bill, let's say if you have a homeowner policy and you're going to bind the homeowner policy for $1,000, the customer will come to you because initially it's going to come to you and may pay you the, the first part of the premium. And after that, the customers don't really have to come to you. It's up to the customer's choice to come to you, pay the premium, but the customer is responsible for the bill, not you. An agency bill is usually the broker is responsible for the bill. So let's say, for example, the uh, same homeowner policy came out $1,000, the broker has to make the monthly payment. The, it's, a, it's a broker responsibility to get the customer to pay the broker, and the broker has to pay the insurance company. So basically, you pay, you pay in advance, and the customer comes and pays you. I would recommend the direct bill because it's a less headache on the broker, and you don't have to have that responsibility. And you, as you know that the customer is going to be making the payment, you really don't have to catch up on the customer and ask for the monthly bill because it, you know it's rather put it on the customer and you leave the responsibility on them at least they know what's going on with their policy and with the agency bill even the customer knows it but the broker if you have about 50 agency bill it's hard to keep track on this 
payment plan, method of payment, audit, deposit, minimum premium, policy premium. You really don't need to write this for court purposes, so you could just leave this blank. Name, first name, insured, and mailing address. So if this person is having, let's say, a business auto, but they're driving for Amazon, for example, <clears throat> you just put down their corporation LLC if they have it on the business. If not, you just put their name. Uh, John Smith, uh, 1234 William Street, whatever the whole address is, and you just put an individual. If it's a corporation, common sense, you just put corporation. You ask them, is it an individual, is it an LLC or a corporation? The customer will tell you about it. The GL code, the SIC, NAIC, FEIN, or social security number. Now, the first three, these three, you don't really don't need anything of it. It really doesn't really work with you. But you might need an FEIN or social security number, especially if, you do, if you're doing a commercial auto or any type of commercial general liability for anything that drives a vehicle, you might need the social security number because you might need to do an MVR report. An MVR report is a report that you need on the customer to make sure their license is clean. So basically, if for court purposes, one of the insurance companies might tell you they get the social security number. Some might not, some might give you the code without the driving license uh, history, some might not, so it's always best if the customer gives it to you, just put it down right over here, you get an accurate code. Business phone number and website address if they have it. Going down over here, if there's more than one in, in, uh, insured, you put down again, you put down the information over here. It's like a partnership, whatever, that you put down over here. They give you a lot of options to put down up to three. Contact information, again, you want that person's name. If it's, if it's up there, then it's fine, but you always double do it again. Contact name, con uh, contact type, is it a cell phone, the name. Uh, Primary phone number, business cell, again, primary email address, secondary email address. Again, for this part, if there's more than one person, again, you fill that part out. Location, if it's, let's say, a commercial liability for from a, from a place, a business that's one, one area, then you put that location number one, street, building number one, city, county, state, and zip. Is it inside or outside city limit? Is it, a, is it an are you the owner or are you the tenant? How many full-time employees you have? How many part-time employees you have? You have, have annual revenue, occupied area, open to the public area, total building area, and area at least to others. See the information a customer most likely is not going to know. You could actually go online and just uh, put their address in and just do some type. You have to do a little bit of research. You have to become a little bit of detective work and get the, some of the information. The full-time employees and part-time employees, is you just have to ask them. You won't know until you ask them. But the annual revenue, even adding revenues, you have to ask them how much you make in the annual revenues. But the occupied area, the open to the public area, and total building area, these are all information you can find online. You don't really need to ask the insured these type of questions. And I, and I hardly believe that they will know the answer to it. Nature of business, again, if you're maybe if you're doing a general liability, maybe on a, on a contract or institution or office or whatever it is, you just click on whatever it is and date business started the year. A description of primary operation. Now, this is excellent. They give you a small amount. Talk about it. What What is it? You ask the customer. Whatever the customer says. Let's say if the customer talks about it, it's a business auto. He's using for for the the small car for Amazon uh, packages slash restaurant delivery services. And they could just talk about it over here. And you you actually writing it down over here and telling the person that's going to get the accord form. This is what the person needs to get a better understanding. Retail stores or service operation of personal total sales. Installation service repair. If it if, if it applies to that person's business, then you put it down. If not, then you really don't need to put anything down. Interest. Is it a breach of warranty? Is it a lien holder, lost pay, mortgagee? So basically, is there an interest party in it? Uh, it, it? Let's say, for example, like the same example I gave you with the Amazon, uh, you know, a driving person that drives for Amazon and is going to have a business auto coverage. What is that? Is it a car on? Is it his car? Is it the mor uh, mortgagee, well, that's, that's usually for homes, but let's say if they have a trustee on that, a registration, whatever it is, a co-owner, you just have to find out what it would apply. So obviously, mortgagee is not going to go on the car, it's usually finance or lease, but mortgage is most likely going on a person that, that's uh, having a building apartment for as a business, for rent purposes, that would be, is that person with that apartment has a mortgagee on him, or is it his? So these are some of the questions you just have to ask the customer. You know, you won't know until you ask them. Again, you don't really need this. Again, reference loan number. Unless if they are a mortgagee, then they give you the loan number, lien amount, interest, end date, phone number, email. That's their information. 
you won't know until you get that information from them uh, if it's a obviously a vehicle you put down item number how many is it's one location building boat aircraft these are our information you really don't need it for court purposes but more than that is this applicant a subjugated other entity yes or no whatever it is does the applicant have any subsidiaries yes or no is this a formal safety program operation in plain? Let's say the safety position, safety manual, monthly meeting, OSHA, yes or no? Are there any exposure to flammable chemicals? Yes or no? Any policy of coverage declined, canceled, or non renewed during the prior three years for any premises or operation? Yes or no? Any past losses or claims relating to sexual abuse or moral station allegation? Negligent hiring? Yes or no? Again, these are all yes or no questions. I could I, I could go on and on and on, uh, but you have to ask these questions to the client so that you know you will have a better understanding. Remarks uh, again, this is more information to put down. Whatever it is, if you don't understand certain items, you could just put a remark there. I did not understand. The customer did not know this. I uh, just giving you a heads up for the underwriter to know. Uh, again, these are prior carry information. If you know it, fine. If you don't know it, guess what? Leave it blank. Uh, loss history uh, if it never happens uh, loss history is like such example let's say if something happened let's say if they, if they were how can I explain it let's say if they ha if they were at fault or not at fault in situation let's say if somebody slipped in front of their homes was it that was it the owner's fault or was it their person's uh, was it, it's not their fault because the snow was so falling you see some of the questions you have to ask especially not a fault, no, uh, uh, loss history fault and not a fault is usually going towards the vehicle side more often than anything else let's say if you're driving for a vehicle and you suddenly hit the brakes and somebody hits you from the back it might be your fault it might not be your fault depending on the situation whatever the insurance company ends up getting into so whatever it is you have to put that information down if you know it again copy of this things goes to one information basically you just click on this check mark on this copy of the notice information practice probably has been given to the applicant uh, so you have to give a copy of, of the notice information packet and to the applicant and once you do all that information, you, you, you could read this on your own. I'm not going to read all this. Uh, you put down your producer's signature, producer's name. You put down your producer's license number, if you remember it. Uh, date and national producer number, again, if you know it. An applicant's signature, you don't need it unless the applicant is with you, then you make a sign. And that's it. That's how you fill out a commercial insurance application accord form. As you can see, it was quite simple. It's not, not that bad, but it's, it's a step by step you have to do. Uh, basically uh, I think I covered most part of the court form uh, if you guys still need some help always uh, you know shout in the comments in my videos I'll try my best to help you out as much as possible again if you like the videos guys please comment like subscribe again if you have any questions about the court form or any other court form I'll try my best to help you guys out um, so if you can thank you guys for watching this video I hope you guys enjoy it I hope you guys learned a lesson from this how to fill that out I hope I was able to clarify some of the confusion how to fill out the court form especially for new brokers slash agents uh, again thank you again guys for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it